the experiment with an air pump. Wright's pictures a brilliant summary of interests and attitudes characteristic of the mid-18th century, the age of reason. A group of friends have gathered in a private house to watch a dramatic scientific experiment demonstrating the power that man can have over life and death. The artist spells out a wide range of reactions to what the friends witness, thus the picture succeeds in embodying the hopes and fears of the age, and offers food for thought for our own as we face changes resulting from developments in science. Wright was a minor master, but here he has produced an undoubted masterpiece of the highest quality, technically accomplished, visually satisfying and morally and intellectually challenging. In the glass bowl is a bird. Wright has painted a white cockatoo for dramatic effect. In practice it would have been a more commonplace bird, like a sparrow or a small animal like a mouse. There is a valve on top of the glass bowl. When the valve is sealed and the air pumped out, the bird or animal collapses from a lack of oxygen. This reaction may seem obvious to us, but it was a new knowledge to many people in the mid-18th century who wanted scientific proof. Oxygen was not properly identified until the 1770s. The visiting scientist has flown locks in a long rope, which makes him look like a wizard. It was common practice at the time for a scientist to travel to a private residence to provide an evening's entertainment and instruction to a wealthy family. As in contrast to the general informant at the process of the experiment, the artist includes a pair of elegantly dressed lovers who are enraptured only by each other and who remain oblivious both to the experiment and to the scientific and moral questions raised. The scientist has his raised hand on the valve and his other hand gestures towards us, his audience. He makes direct eye contact as if to ask the question, shall I open the valve and let the air in so that the bird will live or do I let the bird die? You decide. The principal source of light in the painting is a candle, which is hidden behind the glass bowl. Its distorted image is just observable down the right side of the bowl. In the bowl is a pickled skull, as well as being a brilliant technical rendering of light, which was much admired by Wright's contemporaries. The candle and the skull also have symbolic meanings as reminders of, of the inevitability of death and transcendence of life. This gentleman, who times the experiment, represents those who are excited by scientific discoveries. Beside him, a boy who is also totally involved strains to get a better view. An empty place at the table allows Wright to open up the scene and invites the viewer to participate. On the table, scientific equipment is arranged like a still life. They include a pair of Magdeburg spheres which demonstrate the strength of a vacuum. When they are placed together and when the air pumped out between them, they are inseparable. The Philosopher the posture adopted by the old man is a time-honoured one that represents the thinker. He seems troubled, perhaps pondering the consequences of this newfound knowledge and power. He is there as another reminder that science can be used for both good and evil. The two sisters are torn between curiosity and distress. The man, probably their father, reassures the sister who is in tears. He tries to explain to the girls what is happening in the experiment. The Moonlight and the Enlightenment the moon is probably a reference to the Lunar Society, based in the English Midlands, the birthplace of the Industrial Revolution. It met each month to discuss recent scientific developments and conduct experiments. Many of Wright's friends and patrons were members of the Society. It epitomises, like Wright's painting, the spirit and exchange of ideas that are essence of the Enlightenment, the Age of Reason. The Society met during the full moon so that its members would have the convenience of riding home by the light of the moon, hence the Society's name. The boy is low in the birdcage. He seems uncertain. If the bird lives, it will go back in the cage. If it dies, the cage will not be needed. The way everyone is illuminated by a single source of light at the centre of the experiment suggests that all of them, and thus, are capable of being enlightened by the power of science. Most ambitious painters try to produce high art, that is, art with a serious intellectual or moral purpose and content. Until the 19th century, this meant subjects from ancient history and the Bible. Landscape, skill, life and genre were considered decorative, but on their own they were not high art. By the end of the 19th century the hierarchy had collapsed, with landscape coming to the fore. It was immediately recognised that Wright had taken serious art into uncharted territory by creating a new category of modern subject matter for high art. Joseph Wright, 1734-97 Known as Joseph Wright of Derby, after his native English town, it was here that he completed most of his painting. Known as Joseph Wright of Derby, after his native English town, 
It was here that he completed most of his paintings. In 1773 he spent time in Italy where he was less interested in recording scenes of antiquity than in the effects of fireworks on the Roman skyline. He also recorded one of the greatest natural firework displays, the eruption of Verensius, which he described as being the most wonderful sight in nature. After an unsuccessful venture in the south of England on his return in 1775, he moved back to Derby permanently.